Ferrari just unveiled their new fully electric car, but what I'm really interested in is the electric motor, or motors, they developed to power this vehicle. They've given us quite a lot of information on the engineering, so I want to dig through a lot of the details. Ferrari say they've incorporated some of the most advanced concepts in motor design, inspired by Formula One engineering. So let's check out those claims and see if this motor will be enough to satisfy a skeptical consumer base. Including an innovation to give the motor an authentic noise, potentially solving a problem slowing the uptake of electric sports cars. I respect your time, so let's get straight into the engineering. I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Xerox Deep Dive. At a high level, we're looking at a 1,000 horsepower vehicle that can hit 60 miles per hour in about 2.5 seconds. If we look under the bodywork, the chassis reveals a quad motor setup, made up of a set of front and rear electric motors. As usual, these electric motors use magnets and copper coils to create spinning motion. The stator stays still whilst the rotor spins. This happens when three-phase alternating current flows through the stator's copper coils, which creates a rotating magnetic field that pulls the magnets in the rotor around. The high-speed front motor has a slightly smaller diameter than the rear, which allows it to have a higher maximum speed. In terms of numbers, its maximum speed is an impressive 30,000 RPM. One of the innovations in these motors, though not unique to Ferrari, is the use of a haulback magnet array in the rotor. This allows engineers to direct the forces of the magnets. By positioning the permanent magnets in a specific orientation, you focus the magnetic fields outwards towards the stator. This is how Ferrari gets more bang for their buck. For the same amount of magnetic material, they're directing more of the forces into the most useful direction. And because of the high speeds, it's important that these permanent magnets are held in extremely tight so they don't fly outwards. This is actually something that happened to a motor I was working on during my PhD, and it causes a lot of problems. To manage these massive forces, apparently up to 2.7 tons of force, the rotor is wrapped in a three-layer carbon sleeve. Carbon-wrapped rotors are common in high-speed motors, but the three-layer system appears to be at least slightly innovative. Next, we move to the stationary stator, which has some interesting innovations in it too. You see, the core of electric motors are actually made from lots of thin metal sheets called laminations stacked together. For example, here is a CAD model of a single motor lamination in Onshape, which is about standard at 0.5 millimeters thick. However, the Ferrari motor's ultra-thin laminations are just 0.2 millimeters thick and use a more advanced silicon iron material. Having these laminations so thin helps minimize circulating current loops called eddy currents. If these eddy currents become too large, they waste a lot of energy and generate heat, which causes inefficiencies in the electric motor. At the high frequencies used in these electric motors, which are useful to getting to very high speeds, the design is vital for preventing excess energy loss. You can imagine that if instead of these thin layers we had thicker layers of metal, the eddy currents would be able to grow much larger inside of them. The type of copper windings used are also quite interesting. They use a Litz wire configuration, a special type of conductor designed to reduce inefficiencies related to the skin effect. The skin effect happens because alternating currents flowing through a wire, in this case a copper cable, want to flow mostly along the outer surface of the conductor, rather than evenly throughout its cross-section. The Litz wire addresses this because instead of having one large conductor, it has lots of thin ones braided and woven together. This structure ensures that each strand regularly changes position within the bundle, helping the current distribute more evenly across all of the strands. The result is significantly reduced AC resistance and much lower high frequency losses. The front motor also features a clever clutch system that allows it to be fully mechanically disconnected from the shaft in just 0.5 seconds, all in the name of efficiency. This is because if you spin a permanent magnet electric motor, 
there's some magnetic resistance that you'll feel, which would slow down the vehicle and waste energy. So by disconnecting it, you get rid of that unwanted drag. The rear motor is similar, but slightly larger for higher torques, leading to a lower top speed of around 25,000 RPM. Okay, now this is where things start to get a little bit weird. The sound. And also, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel a lot. To get a unique and authentic sound out of the electric motor, Ferrari has mounted an accelerometer directly onto a rigid part of the inverter. This small sensitive device will pick up the real physical vibrations generated by the motor. Ferrari says a system in the vehicle will then act like an electric guitar, amplifying these real vibrations into the vehicle. I've seen a few places reporting on this information and the information is kind of incomplete, but there appears to be two main ways that they might be using these vibrations. Firstly, by amplifying them into larger vibrations through a tuned resonator system integrated into the rear subframe. This should give a physical haptic response to the driver. Secondly, similar to an electric guitar, which is an analogy they use a lot, they say they'll use speakers to play the vibrations as audio signals, which should give audio cues to the driver too. I'd seen a patent from Ferrari floating around and managed to track down the original document. It was filed around four years ago and the original idea is quite different to what's being done now. The original patent describes how a new current would be injected into the motor, which would cause it to vibrate, even if it wasn't moving. These vibrations would be felt through the vehicle's chassis, and were designed to resonate with the motor housing to increase their intensity. This is almost like using the motor as a kind of speaker. However, this approach was seemingly abandoned, and I can think of a few reasons why. Firstly, I can imagine that these vibrations could age the motor prematurely. And secondly, this artificially injected current to make the noise doesn't exactly feel very authentic to me. I much prefer the new system that uses the real motor's vibrations and amplifies them into the car. This reminds me a bit of systems like the butt kicker for sim racing, which sends vibrations into your, well, butt, to improve racing immersion. And apparently they do this pretty effectively as people really rate the butt kicker systems. But instead of coming from a signal of digital origins, the vibrations in the Ferrari will originate from the real vibrations of the motor. This appears to be a direct response to critics who say they don't want artificial engine noise pumped into their high-performance electric vehicles. I also wonder how they'll balance this with the simulated 5-speed shifter that they've also announced, possibly by changing the amplification settings for each simulated gear. This type of artificial gear simulation is already available in the Ionic 5N, and I had the pleasure of driving one last year. If you haven't tried this already, I know this sounds like a gimmick, and it kind of is, but it's a really good gimmick and made the driving experience a lot more fun. For any of you guys that have tried sim racing, you'll know that simulated driving experiences, even if completely simulated, can be really fun too. Personally, I expect Ferrari will have developed some incredible acoustics, and I think it will translate into a great driving experience. I'm very interested to see how test drives go, and whether people say they feel closer to the car due to the real vibrations, or if mapping noises to the RPM of the motor would have had a similar effect. Either way, it's a very interesting idea, and Ferrari clearly understand their audience. And it's also pretty good marketing. I think Ferrari is taking its first all-electric car very seriously. They aim to elevate power and efficiency through aggressive engineering in the electric motor, using thin laminations, lit wire, haulback arrays, and carbon composites. But the question remains, will this new sound be enough to convert those who have become accustomed to V8s and V12s? One thing is for sure though, to make innovative products like this, engineers need to design and iterate using the best available tools like the 3D CAD modeling software from Onshape. If you are an engineer, tinkerer, or part of a business looking for an incredible computer-aided design solution, then you need to check out Onshape. 
a professional grade CAD and product data management system designed to revolutionize how you design and manage your products. Imagine secure real-time collaboration, multiple people working on the same design at once. No more crashes, no lost data, and no need for an IT team. Onshape tracks every change automatically with infinite restore capabilities, and its branching and merging features, similar to Git, make merging complex designs effortless. Plus, it runs on any device, from computers to tablets, so you can work anywhere, anytime. For you viewers in the US, Onshape just launched Onshape Government, a version specifically tailored for companies needing regulatory compliance, like ITAR and EAR. And unlike traditional CAD software, Onshape is built entirely in the cloud, accessible directly from your browser, meaning no matter who you are, you can get set up in minutes. Sign up for Onshape today and get up to six months of the professional version for free at onshape.pro slash Xeroth.